Let's talk about the physics of self-storage. My name's Mark Helm, and I'm the author of Creating Wealth Through Self-Storage, and I'm the creator of the Quick Start Academy, which houses all of the online training that I offer the small investor. You can find out more about it at creatingwealththroughselfstorage.com. But today's gonna be kind of a fun episode, at least for me, because I get to talk about two passions that I have. One is self-storage and the other passion I have is physics. I love reading and studying about physics, particularly theoretical physics at the quantum level. I really enjoy, I find it very mind-bending, exciting, and even spiritual. So we're going to talk about physics and self-storage today. Now, Sir Isaac Newton really was kind of the birth of physics as we know it today. We still use Newtonian physics as we look out into the heavens and we're dealing with large physical bodies and it is a branch of physics that has served humanity very well. But early in the 1900s, as science evolved and we started developing instruments and tools that allowed us to explore smaller and smaller atomic and subatomic levels of the universe, what we discovered is Newtonian physics went out the window, didn't work. And quantum mechanics or physics at the quantum level began to evolve with its own rules and laws. Since the early 1900s, physicists have been trying to create a unified theory which basically combines Newtonian physics and quantum mechanics. And who would have thought that maybe self-storage is the place where that could happen? Let's talk about physics and self-storage today. I didn't realize this, but I think the REITs have hired physicists and put them on their payroll. Why? Well, because Newton's first law of motion, and I'm shortening it a little bit here, but his first law of motion says that a body at rest will remain at rest unless a, a force is applied to it from the outside. So when I did a conversion in an urban market, and we were written, we were stabilized and we were written 10 by 10s at $149 a month. And then a block away, a REIT opens up to compete with us. And they were offering 10 by 10s at $70 and the first three months free. I didn't realize it at the time, but they were applying Newton's first law of motion. They didn't under, they understood that once someone moved in, their stuff would stay at rest unless acted upon by an outside force. And the outside force tends to be economic pressure. And usually it takes a lot of economic pressure to begin to move that stuff out of that unit. It will stay at rest for quite a while. How much force does it take to get that body in motion again, that stuff out of that unit? Well, it's different in every market, but at the most recent Inside Self Storage Convention I just returned from, what we learned is that the REITs are on average raising their rates once somebody moves in they're raising their rates anywhere from 15 to 30 percent every four or five months. That's not enough force to get that body moving in most markets. Now, they must have physicists on their payroll because they are conducting detailed experiments. In fact, they call it ECPI data or an ECPI quotient. That's an existing customer's price increase. And they've got it down to a science how much they force can be applied before, the, before motion starts happening and stuff starts moving out of that unit. Now, in controlled scientific experiments, we don't usually ponder whether right or wrong, good or bad. We leave that to the philosophers. I tend to 
be a philosopher quite often and give you my opinions on what's good and bad, but that's not this episode. In this episode, we're taking a scientific approach. We're just looking at raw data. I may decide to become a philosopher on another episode, or you can look at past episodes where I've ranted on this. Not today. Perhaps if we're in lease up, we should take advantage of Newton's first law of motion. Now that's how we can apply Newtonian physics to self-storage. Let's go deeper. Let's go into the quantum level and look at some quantum laws and see how that might apply to self-storage. In 1927, two scientists discovered something very weird that altered science forever. That was the first double slit experiment. So what the double slit experiment was is basically they had a cardboard like material with two slits in it and then a screen behind it. And the scientists were shooting light light photons and everyone knew at that time light was energy and they were shooting light photons through those double slits and on the screen behind it creating wave-like patterns. Know that when you create a wave-like pattern that's energy. So they, everyone knew light was energy and they were shooting those waves and measuring the, the crest of those waves. And they got real interested in which photons were going through what slit. So they created a measuring device and put it on the slit so they could measure what photon was going through what slit to create the energy waves. And something very strange happened. When they started measuring it, instead of a wave or energy pattern on the screen, they saw dots like a shotgun. And dots are matter. When you see dots on a screen, what you're seeing is matter. So they thought they'd done something wrong. They took the measuring device off and guess what? They saw waves. They put the measuring device on and guess what? They saw matter. And this experiment has been repeated oh, thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of times. We've since learned that it doesn't matter whether it's light, it can be any type of subatomic particle, any type of particle can be shot through the double slit experiment. And when we're measuring it and observing it, we see matter. When we're not observing it or measuring it, what you see are, is energy. Sounds strange, doesn't it? Physics has never been the same since. And this really means a lot, but two basic things it means is when an observer's present, the observer affects the results. That's called the observer effect. One of the other things it means is when consciousness is present or an observer is present, energy collapses into matter. They call that the wave function collapse. We're not going to talk about it today, but it's pretty cool. It's very exciting. We're going to talk about the observer effect. And you can actually impact the results by merely observing it. In the self-storage business, what that means is we can impact the results of our business by measuring it. We're not going to use double slits, but we're going to measure it. The first time I really became aware of this is when I tried to figure out what the average value of a customer was. I've, I realized that my operations report showed me the average length of stay of a customer. And I realized that it'd be real easy to get my average rent. It's my actual income divided by my, the number of units. And so I started measuring the value of a customer and guess what happened? The value of my customer started going up. Yes, we had some price increases. Yes, the length of stay increased because the longer you own a facility, the, the more longer people tend to stay. But by measuring it, I began to be able to impact 
every aspect of my business, how I marketed it, how much I spent, and merely by measuring. Here's an example of what I discovered in this particular experiment. When I started in year one, we're gonna take an average facility, one facility of the many that we had at the time. When I started measuring that, my average length of stay in that facility was 42.93 months. At the, within three years on the last quarter, the last day of the third year, the average length of stay had gone up 48.36 months. When I started, the average value of a customer in that facility was $5,094.54. And when it ended, the average value was $55.71.78. If you want to impact something in your business, start measuring it. If you want to impact tenant insurance, start measuring it. Create a measurement. How much of your existing customers, what percentage of your existing customers are using it? What percentage of new customers are using it if you don't make it mandatory? Anything you want to impact. Retail sales, start measuring it. Who knew that self-storage could be the way that we could unify Newtonian physics and quantum mechanics. That's just another example of how cell storage is the best business in the world. Perhaps someday we'll have an episode on the f philosophical implications of the physics of cell storage, but today I wanted to keep it strictly on the scientific level. There's a saying in physics, especially at the quantum level, when scientists are pondering some of the very strange, weird things that go on at, the, at that level of physics, the saying is, just shut up and measure. Now, you don't have to shut up, but just measure. Measure everything you want to impact in your business. I look forward to being with you next week. My name is Mark Helm. I'm the author of Creating Wealth Through Self Storage, and I'm the creator of the Storage World Analyzer. That's a financial analysis tool we use to measure the potential cash flows of a project as we're analyzing it. It informs us what we can pay for it and what the likely cash flows are going to be. And it gives us a lot of information so we can decide what projects are worth going after and which ones aren't. If you're using Excel, great, but I really invite you to look at the Storage World Analyzer. I look forward to being with you next week. I will see you then.